Hello everyone, today I'm here to do a video that I thought would just be fun. Today I'm going to talk about my favorite thrillers that I read in 2022 and my least favorite thrillers. So I read primarily two genres. If you want me to do this for the other genre, let me know. But I mainly read thrillers and romance. So those are kind of, I've learned, like my go-to genres. Like if I'm ever in a slump, if I just want to read a book, those are the genres I usually go to. So with that means I read a lot of that genre and particularly in 2022 I read 34 thrillers. I'm kind of combining that also with th with horror I think too. I might have to update the numbers. It might be higher. I'll leave it right here if it's different. But either way that's a good chunk of my reading because I read 96 books so I'm sure I read a lot of romances, so if you want me to do a kind of top and least favorite um, romance reads of 2022, let me know as well. But I have 16 books I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about my top eight thrillers that I read in 2022 and my least, like my bottom eight thrillers I read in 2022. So I'm going to kind of differentiate them. I'm going to start off with the good because that's always fun to talk about the good books. You never want to talk about the bad books. At least I don't. I don't like bashing books. No. And I wasn't going to do this particularly to book releases in 2022, but I was like, you know what? Now I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about all of the thriller releases in 2022. So I'm including backlist thriller books that I read, they maybe came out in 2020, 2018. Either way, I read them in 2022. Does that make sense? Longest and forever. Let's just cut to it. The so first up is no secret. My favorite thriller of the whole year was In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. This is on my favorites list of the whole entire year. I love this one. This is about a group of college um, kids that are coming into the reunion. Basically, one of their friend groups dies. Name's Heather, unfortunately, because that's my name. So it was awkward to read about. I was like, oh, this is kind of awkward. But they never really solved Heather's murder. So they're back at the reunion. They're like, let's hash it out. We're going to figure out who killed Heather once and for all. And honestly, they are all horrible characters. None of them have any redeeming qualities whatsoever. And usually, I've said time and time again, I don't jive well with those books. I need to have some character that I can like kind of like root for that has good qualities. That's you know overall a good person so when I read books where it's all horrible people I'm like oh I'm not too sure but actually Winstead the way she wrote it was just so amazing the twist and turn of this book the very last um big plot twist I loved it easily my favorite throw of the year I won't go on about it because I've talked about it a lot another book that I read that I haven't talked a lot about I think it's classified as horror but I kind of think it's thriller-ish and that is and that is Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. Hopefully I pronounced that name right. This is my first book by her and I have to say I really enjoyed it. I read this on ebook so my memory of it may be a little foggy so I'll do my best. But basically it takes place in two timelines. She's kind of known for that. If you know she wrote The Winter People. I'm planning to read that this winter. Hopefully. Like knock on wood. My shelf's made of wood. I can do that. Um, but basically <laughs> back... Um, you know back in the day we had a sister and a brother and they lived with their grandmother and the grandmother ran this kind of psych psychiatric hospital, you know, um, for mentally ill patients. And there's a little girl that comes to the hospital and she tells them, you know, I'm going to bring her home, you know, let's kind of imagine her as your new sister, like treat her kindly and treat her nicely. And this girl comes in and it's kind of odd at first, but then they decide to start kind of going into the hospital, try to figure out what secrets there are and things like that. Now, fast forward many, many years later, we follow a character that is trying to like hunt down monsters because she thinks monsters are real. Her past is also tied in with this kind of psychiatric hospital and she's learning that maybe there's a killer and like a monster loose near the psychiatric hospital so she has to kind of go back there. And it's very vague synopsis, please forgive me, but it was really good. Like it was creepy. It had a lot of talk about family. The plot twist were somewhat predictable, but I still enjoyed them a ton. If you want a dark, creep me ass atmospheric book, definitely check this one out. Like I said, I think it's shelved as horror, but I would say it's kind of, it's not super, super scary, but it's definitely very thriller-esque. Then we have one that I have wanted to read for a while and I finally did. Death of the Nile by Agatha Christie. This is my second Agatha Christie book and I really enjoyed it. Definitely my favorite of hers thus far. So this is all about, this is a part of the series, oh gosh, 
Hercule Poinard, I always pronounce his name horribly. He's a famous detective. If you know, you know. Um, but basically this whole book is about him going on this cruise on the Nile with a whole bunch of other rich people and someone gets murdered and you have to figure out who done it. Agatha Christie is known for her locked door mysteries where you have a certain set cast of characters and one of them is the murderer and you have to kind of pluck it one by one to figure out who. I love this one. The other one that I read by her was, um, and then there were none, which is a great one, but I love that, um, just, I don't know, I think the characters are more, like, interesting in this book. I love the setting of it. I just have come to learn that I love Agatha Christie, and Agatha Christie is known, like, she's famous for her thrillers, and I can see why. So, if you're like, I'm not too sure about classics, because me neither. I'm not a classic reader at all. I've learned that about me. I try to expand somewhat. I've read Little Woman. I did enjoy that. Some of them I do like, but majority, I'm just not a classic reader. I still would recommend Agatha Christie. I still think her work stands this time. It's very, um, um, readable in case you're wondering with language and the way things are said. Yes, it is kind of set in the past, obviously, but it's still very much readable to this day. So I would definitely recommend checking out Agatha Christie. Another throw that made it into my top favorites of the year was My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. This is my third novel by him, and goodness me, he does not disappoint. This is my first time, I think the first time he's made my favorites list, but Grady Hendrix writes horror. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's horror. But it's not like super scary, it's more like grotesque which is sounds really odd but it is but this book is set in the 80s if you can't tell because this whole book is fashioned like a VHS tape yes 90s kids where you at <laughs> Um, but basically we have characters I think Gretchen and Abby they're best friends and one night they go into the woods to have some fun and I think Gretchen I forget which one yeah Gretchen comes out of the woods and something's off with Gretchen you know she's got a lot of problems she may be possessed by a demon so the whole book goes throughout her Abby trying to figure out what is going on should she, should she perform an exorcism on her best friend and at the root of it all it's about a friendship. I've learned with Grady Hendrix books that there is a predominant like big plot of scariness like this one's obviously about a demon possession. Scary but at the root of it it's something much more like bigger like a bigger picture thing like a friendship aka also the book I'm currently reading of his right now that is just being released is How to Sell a Haunted House which is about a brother and sister and like familyness. <sighs> I don't know, man. That might take the cake for the creepiest Grady Hendrix book I read because it is about scary puppets. It's intense. But this one I really, really enjoyed. I highly recommend it. If you're a scaredy cat, I think you could read this still. Like I said, it's not overly, overly scary. You know, it's 80s possessions. You know, kind of the thing that was back in the 80s with the poltergeist, Stephen King, you know, the 80s. So I really loved it. Highly recommend it. One that didn't quite make my list of the favorites of the year was Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. This is her second book in, I guess, the pieces of her series. Um, it was made into a Netflix show. Weirdly enough, I do not recommend the Netflix. Weirdly enough, I do not recommend the Netflix show. I know that's blasphemy because Tony Collette is in it, and I love Tony Collette. Like usually, anything she's in, I'm all for. But that show, no. <laughs> but I did enjoy pieces of her. It's the only Karen Slaughter book I've read because her books I've heard are intense. So I can't tell you too much about this one, but we follow our main character, Andrea, and she is now a, he's a U.S. Marshal, and she basically gets assigned to protect this judge that is getting death threats. And she goes there and she learns that there's also an unsolved murder tied to this and also it might be familiar to Andrea's past. So this one goes back in time. Karen Slaughter is kind of known for that, for way back when this young girl was murdered on her prom night to now and how it kind of fits in with Andrea and the judge and it's very dark the characters are horrible a lot of really horrible things are done like it's kind of got also got like a cult in it as well but I enjoyed it I flew through it I was addicted to it it was a great one it makes me want to read more Karen Slaughter but I'm hesitant because I'm like can I handle it but I still really love this one and of course you know what made my list Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney I love this one it's on a lot of people's favorite list with good reason if you're looking for a very thriller atmospheric book that is perfect to read in kind of the cold rainy day this is one for you this is kind of a modern retelling of Agatha Christie's and then there were none. I think if you've read that book you can clearly see where this book is going but that didn't make it any less enjoyable. So in this book we follow a character named Daisy Darker and she's going home to her grandmother's to celebrate her grandmother's birthday. It's on Halloween. Her grandmother lives like on this house on an island that when the tide goes in or something like that you can't leave. Like you're kind of stuck there and so her she goes there her sister and um 
Her parents, they have a very tumultuous family relationship and the clock strikes midnight and what do you know, somebody dies every hour upon the hour and they're like, who's done it? So it's got that Agatha Christie locked door thing for sure, but Alice Feeney loves a plot twist. <laughs> yes, she does. She likes multiple ones too. So ones I could see coming, some I could not, but either way, I really enjoyed the writing of this one and how it was very atmospheric with the house being so close to the sea, you could smell the salt in the air, and how it was dark and creepy with the Halloween vibes. I really loved it. Definitely a favorite of mine for sure. Next up is The Nothing Man by Katherine Ryan Howard. I read two books from her this year and this one was definitely my favorite. I think another one of hers might be on my least favorite so that just goes to show you. Um, this one is wins for the most interesting plot. Like I have learned this author writes really interesting plots but her execution is kind of ugh, not there. So this one is all about a guy who is a security guard in like this mall and he's like walking around one day and he sees the books and he releases and there's a book called The Nothing Man and he's like, holy crap, this whole book is about the serial killer, The Nothing Man, how he terrorized and hurt a lot of family members and how this one girl that's the only like survivor of him is writing her kind of tell all and she's trying to figure out who he is and he's like, crap because what do you know he is actually the nothing man so this book is really interesting how you get a book within a book because in this book um, you actually get chapters of the nothing man reading what eve who escaped the nothing man's thoughts are and you can also see jim who is in fact the nothing man am i confusing you yet reading it and being like is she gonna find out who i am like holy crap what am i gonna do i didn't love this one as much as i wanted to because i felt like the overall ending was not there for me but I really enjoyed the whole tension of will he be found will he get caught finally will he finally figure out who he really is and it's just really interesting about a serial killer finding a book that's written about him like that just is so interesting to me and so I definitely really enjoyed it and I would recommend it it wasn't it could have made my favorites but like I said Catherine Ryan Howard's her um it just doesn't go a hundred percent there for me so I liked it I did enjoy it. It just wasn't one of my all-time favorites. And the last book I will talk about as far as my favorites for thrillers go will be Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. I read three books by her, maybe two books, uh, you know, three books <laughs> this year from her and this one's easily my favorite. It's about a girl that is in jail because she finally gets found out that she was involved in her best friend's murder years ago. You follow her to jail and she does her time. She comes out and the guy who committed all this was her high school boyfriend who is kind of like a serial killer now. Well he escapes jail and murders are happening and she's like crap and so it just basically is all about characters that have a lot of different scary things and they have motives and creepiness and this one's very dark I'd say especially the end. I was like oh my gosh like this is intense but I enjoyed it it's definitely a very twisty thriller Jennifer Hillier writes really easy to read thrillers like ones that you can fly through there are some that you just have to take your time be patient with them and there are some that you're just like I gotta finish this thing ASAP and this one was one of them those are my eight favorite thrillers now let's talk about some of my least favorite thrillers that I've read this year Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham this was actually my first read ever of 2022 I was really excited about it I believe its debut novel. Oh my gosh, I don't remember what this book is about. I just remember not enjoying it. It had a great plot. It was about a character, I believe, that she she found out basically when she was younger that her dad was a serial killer. There was all these girls that went missing and her dad like confessed and he was put away and now her mom has passed away and her dad's passed away and she kind of has to go home to set things right. And now murders are popping up that are very much like copycats of her dad. So she's like, what the hell is going on? And it sounds so interesting, doesn't it? It really does. But it just fell flat. The the plot twists were so predictable. I hated the way it ended. The character already, I am not a fan of the um, unpredictable main character where you don't know if she's really telling the truth or not. She's unreliable. That's the word I'm looking for. I've read it so many times. Girl on the Train, um, The Silent Patient. You just don't know if what she's saying or what she's seeing is actually real because she doesn't even know it herself. So you're like, I don't know what to believe. <laughs> so that's the number one thing I hated about it because I was like, I, how am I supposed to believe you? You don't know what you're doing. Obviously she's going through a lot of trauma. It just wasn't there for me. Didn't enjoy it. Definitely was a letdown for sure, especially being my least, especially being my first book of the year. 
didn't start off the year with a good like jump I will say <laughs> then we have one that I've you know it's in my least favorites video but I'll still talk about it the last thing you told me by Laura Dave I've told you this time and time again I read this because of my 22 books to read in 2022 I read it primarily because I believe it won the Goodreads Choice Award for th favorite thriller I want to say in 2020 or maybe 20 I don't know it won the award and so with that you're like going into it with really high expectations but this one was just it is a case of mismarketed I'll say that and I'll say it again and I'll stand by it because when you read it it's not a thriller book at all. It's more of a woman's fiction. It's more about family. There's not a lot of thrilling aspects to it. We follow a character. I don't even know her name. She gets married to this guy. Great. He, she inherits a stepdaughter. Great. And then her husband goes missing and she's like, what the crap? And so she's trying to figure out along with her stepdaughter, like where did her husband go? What's going on? And you start uncovering the past. And it sounds interesting. It was boring. Nothing really happened. At the end, it was really about a mother and a stepchild like coming together and being a family, which is great. That's awesome like it wasn't a horrible book with that but they treated it like the best thriller ever and I'm like this is not a thriller it's really not it's not at all so I put it on the list and I still will put it on the list because they still market it as a thriller and it's not I'm just gonna move on I feel like I've talked a lot about this one The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Peckin and this is my I don't even know third or fourth book by them and I think officially after this I have to bid adieu to them because I have liked one book by them and the last three I have not. I really enjoyed The Life Between Us which was their first book they wrote together and then every book after that I have not liked. This one oh gosh what is it about? It's about a married couple that is having a rough time and they go to this therapist which is like the world's renowned therapist but she doesn't have a license anymore because she got too involved like with her therapist like helping marriage couples out and I'm like if that's not a warning sign, I don't know what is. Why would you go to this therapist? And of course, what do you know? She gets really involved in their lives and like breaks in their house and stuff. And I'm like, it just, it wasn't good. The plot twists were not good. Everything was predictable. I just, it was boring on boring on boring. And I just, I think I just have to bid adieu to this author duo. I just, I, I want to like their books. I just don't. And I think more often than not now, I'm not liking them, so I'm not going to continue reading them if I don't enjoy them. And I know that sounds harsh, but why waste your time, you know, on books that you think, like, you hope that'll be good, but you kind of have a feeling it won't. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Then we have another thrill that I really wanted to love, but didn't. The Family Game by Katherine Steadman. This one sounded much like Ready or Not, this movie that I've heard a lot about. Um, and I've watched a lot of clips. It's about a woman that gets married to this guy and that night. They have to play this hide and seek game and she's the target and if she gets caught, she gets killed. <laughs> so it sounded really interesting. So this is about a character that um, she gets engaged and she's never met her family and they're all really rich and she meets them and then secrets are unleashed and then they all start to have these games. Like there's a one game that was my favorite like Krampus and that was really creepy like I was like oh my gosh and then on Christmas Eve they have like the scavenger hunt that was also really creepy. If they would have went with that the whole book I would have really enjoyed it but as instead the scavenger hunt that was the best part of the whole book took up maybe the last 10% of the book the majority of it was her trying to figure out her fiance's secrets and like her father-in-law having this weird attraction to her father-in-law and I was like this is not it like no like get it out like I don't know so the author wasted a lot of time getting to the big finale when all I wanted was for the finale to be elongated which usually I don't say that but the best game the best thing about this book are the games and coincidentally enough there's not enough of them in this book so I just I don't know I wanted to like it more it's not like a least favorite book I didn't put it on my least favorite books of the year because it wasn't but as far as thrillers go, it was because I was expecting to love this one and it just let me down a little bit. The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I, ugh, this is another author I might have to bid adieu to because this is my third book by her. I really enjoyed one, love the guest list. Then I read The Hunting Party, hated it. Then I read this one, did not like it. I learned with Lucy Foley, she writes a lot of unlikable characters, like characters you want to punch in the face, characters that you don't care if they die or not. You just don't care. Lucy Foley is known for that. So this one's about a girl that goes to stay with her brother in Paris and he's not there and so she has to like investigate all the people living in the apartment and it's boring. That's all you know. It wasn't good. I'm just gonna move on. Next up is Hyde, another one of my least favorite books. This one I really had high hopes for. It's a horror book, not even scary. It's about characters that play this hide and seek game in this old abandoned amusement park and you're like, crap, this sounds amazing. Nothing happens. 
nothing. Like they had an opportunity to be creepy and dark at night. They don't play the freaking hide and seek game in the dark. They play in the daytime. I'm like, where's the freaking stakes at? Like I'm a scaredy cat and I wanted more, I wanted to be scared more. Like that's telling you something. I, I can't talk about this book more. I, I have not seen this yet on somebody's favorites book because it just was meh. It was not good. Highly disappointed in it. Malice House by Megan Shepherd. I had really high hopes for this one. It was all about a character that her father was a famous author. He died. She goes home to kind of, you know, collect his belongings and she finds a manuscript there that he never released full of like these really creepy children's stories. And coincidentally enough, she's an illustrator. So she's like, you know what, maybe I could sell this because she's not doing good financially. Maybe I can draw some of those illustrations, like bring them to life, put them in a binding and sell them. And so she starts to like ask her dad's friends. They get really too interested in it. And then maybe her illustrations, you know, with her dad's things start maybe coming to life. It sounds really interesting, doesn't it? Again, another book where nothing happens until the last 20% of the book. Like when the last 20%, like S hit the fan, like it got creepy quick. I'm not going to lie to you. But by that time, I was so uninterested because nothing was happening that I didn't even care. And that's just how I feel. Nothing really happened. I did not enjoy it. It was a sad one. I, uh... I think that's all. Is that eight? I don't know. I'm just gonna stop because I don't want to bash on any books. So there you have my like favorite thrillers of the read and my least favorite thrillers of the read. Either way, I read a good majority of thrillers this year. I read 36. That's a lot. Goes to show you that not all of them are gonna be amazing, and that is okay because that's how life works. But I would love to know what favorite thrillers you've read this year or last year, I should say, and what least favorite thrillers you read last year. Let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.